Henry was able to spend a brief moment with Thomas Edison to say, Thomas, I'm, I'm working on a new invention, something that I'd like to do with automobiles that run on gasoline, thinking that it might be something that Thomas would not be accepting of. Indeed, Thomas was very accepting of it. He gave Henry credibility for what he was doing, gave him encouragement, and said, don't stop, keep going, keep working at it. That series of discussions that he had with Thomas Edison gave him the energy inside, the passion, and the ability to drive in terms of following his dream to work on a gasoline-powered automobile. He learned that he was much more interested in mechanical devices, how things worked. He could take anything apart and put it back together again and make it work. Trains were a primary method for people to get around, but never had he seen one that wasn't on a track. So this road engine was something that was very compelling, very, very interesting to Henry. Henry and his mother were very, very close. As a matter of fact, Henry acknowledged in a book later in his life that his tie to the farm was more to his mother than anything else. And once she passed, it was very, very challenging him for him to keep that passion and that love for staying in that farm. In 1879, he took on a low-level job as an apprentice where he was going to learn tooling and other kinds of primary skills that he's going to need that he's going to use later on. Those jobs then came very frequently, one after the next, because he saw new opportunities, new opportunities to learn new things and do new things. The company started off in a rental facility on Mack Avenue. They were there for about a year and produced a car called the Model A. Ford Motor Company was successful in introducing additional new cars. These cars are gonna show regular innovations inside of them. They're gonna be stepping stones through the improvement of all of the Ford Motor Company cars leading up to the Model T. The Model T was quickly named as the car that put the world on wheels. It was affordable, it was reliable, it was attainable, and what it did is it mobilized the world. Factories were very, very busy locations and constantly changing. But some important things happened at the Highland Park plant. 
workers, even when we were here at Paquette, they were talking all the time in terms of maybe there's some other things we could do. What if that car was moving as it was being assembled? And it was at the Highland Park plant in December of 1913 that the first moving assembly line appeared. So now, instead of the workers moving and the parts all coming to different locations, they found that they could organize that factory in a way so that the workers really stayed stationary, but it was the vehicle that was moving down this assembly line. And it kind of goes back to the railroad kind of concept because here's a set of rails. Actually, they had multiples of these same rails set up inside of the factory so that these vehicles could start still with the chassis and the axle, and eventually this is rolling along now on this track, and they're gonna start assembling those parts as the vehicle would come to the uh, workers right there. Each worker was trained on how to do a particular operation. They would do that operation and then wait for the next car to come along. Very effective and very, very timely. They were able to produce lots more cars in this way, and the price of the cars went down considerably because they could see that they could produce them more quickly. The workers could be a little bit more idle when it was uh, station assembly, but now there's a lot of demand on those workers. And not only demand, they're going to have to work hard, very hard. Injuries occurred a little bit more frequently than they would uh, in an environment where they didn't have a moving assembly line. And indeed, uh, the workers, which were working for $2.50 a day at that point in time for a 10 hour a day, it was fatiguing. You know, they were really, they were tired. And indeed, it gets to be more boring than it was with some of the previous work that they were doing. So as a result, some of these workers started not showing up for work. You can imagine that's gonna have a mammoth impact on profits and the whole industry, the competitors now that are Henry's, come out in the newspaper and every other kind of media that they can saying, this is ridiculous. This is going to destroy the profits, you know, that we're making inside of the automobile industry. They were wrong. It formed such an enticement that we now had people coming from foreign lands looking for jobs here in Detroit because to make $5 a day was just absolutely unheard of. Those people that had those $5 a day jobs now were very interested in keeping them and they knew that they had to show up to work each day to be able to do that. But Henry also is creating something else. He's creating something else that's really important. You're also gonna see that these people are making more money, but what are they gonna do with that money? And one of the hopes is they're gonna buy a car. Altogether, Ford Motor Company is going to make 15 million Model Ts. 15 million Model Ts is a mammoth number. Henry actually had 20 locations in the United States that were assembly locations for Model Ts, and there were 21 of them around the world. This enabled the world to see the importance of the moving assembly line. So now you can see competitors had really close examples in terms of how Ford was able to economize the manufacturing of automobiles, how they were successfully able to make tremendous growth in terms of profit margins, et cetera. So these lessons were something that were being taken to many, many different foreign countries so they could benefit from that. He also helped the world because all those workers that were in those foreign plants, they didn't come from the United States at all. They came right from the country where those happened to be installed. And that was helping their economy. And it was also helping their growth and their expansion because now they had the automobiles that they needed to be mobilized, to be able to do the things both in terms of work as well as family. The 
time period of Henry Ford includes a lot of people that were working very hard and inventing a lot of different things. But Henry really stood out well above the crowd for a lot of different reasons. First of all, it's passion. I don't know another person that has as much passion as he had for what he wanted to do and he was determined to be able to do. The people that were loyal to him, the people that came here, were extremely successful, yes, in business, and yes, in terms of making money. Because those are the things that he could give them as the simple rewards. They were gonna take other people that had that same passion, that same thrive, that same will to, to do their best, and he's gonna make sure that he's gonna hang on to those people as well as he could. <laughs>